what a great combination, you know. Well, I think the the dean said that it influenced where they yeah, put the law certainly. school, because um, uh, and, and we're actually teaching classes now in here for the law school. Yeah. Uh, we've got our um, old CL chief learning officer, uh, Mark Yancey, is now a professor at. Um, USC School of Law. Ah, good. And he, he's, uh, he's, I think he's called Professor of Practice. And so they're getting, they're, they actually teach some of the third years in this building. So How I to think, actually be a lawyer. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, and, and a prosecutor. You know, it's yeah. a totally different world than, than what most of them are used to. I guess everybody's keeping up with the Murdoch case, too. <laughs> yeah, especially my wife. <laughs> oh, my God. I went to... Very close to Harpootley, and so. Uh huh. Um, oh, okay. All right. Yeah. So, yeah, that's uh, it's been fascinating, especially him going on this on the. Uh, May I suggest you? Absolutely. Can do anything. Um, I sent you a list of right, topic of areas. Is there anything that I missed or? No, I think. I just remember, you know, the economic impact of the air flights and all was going to mm -hmm. be, now I'm sure all of that's changed with how airlines, you know, yeah, operate, yeah. but uh, that was a big deal then. Um, well, let's go ahead and start, Mr. Mayor. Um, when did you first hear about the Department of Justice and Senator Hollings bringing something to South Carolina? You know, it was about a year before, I think, uh, it became public. Uh, and uh, then we didn't know exactly where it w would be located. And, uh, uh, you know, obviously, I think Senator Hollings wanted to keep, keep it close to the vest um, since uh, he was probably the only one uh, in Washington that thought Columbia, South Carolina was the best location for this facility, though the facility was probably uh, everyone thought it was needed. It, uh, the location is what having a senior senator, senator does uh, uh, to uh, bring it to your town. Mm -hmm. So what did you understand what it was going to be at the time? Because I remember me just reading the newspapers. I wasn't really clear about what the facility was going to be. Well, they explained it, uh, you know, the training center for uh, U.S. attorneys. That's what it was. I'm sure it's expanded since then, but that was the primary um, role of, and, you know, U.S. prosecutors probably of any description. And uh, uh, I believe they would be staying here, you know, um, and um, so it, uh, it was pretty clear cut that uh, it would be great to have that in your city because, you know, more visitors coming in who uh, obviously are not going to cause any problems or require many, much of the oil services. And uh, just a, a great thing for uh, Columbia, South Carolina, and uh, the university. What was it like working? Uh, a, did you get a phone call from somebody saying this was happening, or did they say we need you to come to a meeting? And how did that work? Out? Well, with Senator Hollings, uh, you would get summoned to a meeting, and he would start, and when he finished, the meeting would be over. Uh, so um, I remember asking. One question about could we offer suggestions on where it was to be located, uh, because at that time we, and he was clear that no, he, he had the location, and so it was like, yes, sir. Uh, but uh, Senator Hollings was like that in every respect. So, um, you know, during those good old days, uh, uh, many years ago when you had Senator Hollings and Senator Thurman, um, you could, uh, they could really get things delivered and Senator Hollings was just tremendous at having the vision to see something that was needed, it would do well here. Mm -hmm. So the, um, the, the announcement was that it was going to be at the university campus, but there was some um, move to also maybe located on Main Street? There was, but um, that was before we knew that, that Senator Hollings had uh, an idea as to where it should go. And of course, this was wholly Senator Hollings' project. It, it was not like 
we were recruiting something. I mean, obviously it was the project itself, I think, was needed and wanted. Uh, the having it located here part uh, was going to be a vote of one, which is Senator Hollings. And, you know, where it would be located in the relationship with the university was another vote of one. So once we got the uh, prescription of as to where and what the plan was, uh, obviously that was terrific. What was the um, what were the discussions about the say the logistics of having say 300 people coming to town every week and the additional possibly two three hundred uh, jobs that were going to be here and the discussions about how those people would interact with the city like going out to restaurants and that and hotels and that sort of thing well I think clearly it was going to have an economic impact uh, impact from the airlines uh, from uh, the hospitality industry and um, uh, obviously having uh, prosecutors come to town for training uh, there there's no downside to that and uh, so we were all very excited about it um, because we didn't have to really lobby for it because it was a Washington thing that Senator Hollings was doing. You know, we just, um, in many cases, didn't want to say anything that would uh, uh, cause any wrinkles in it. So uh, I don't think there was ever a need to argue for it uh, because we really weren't um, competing with any other city, we didn't think, other than Senator Hollings, you know. Uh, and um, again, a vote of one in terms of where it would be located and uh, just glad that Columbia was uh, top of the list. And obviously, we've seen now over the years, the 25 years, that having it located where it is with the university and now the USC School of Law has just been a terrific uh, addition. But um, did, was there, like, you had to work out bus routes and all sorts of things like that, you know, how are you going to transport these people around town? Um, centrally located, because it, it it was between the Vista and Five Points, but the Vista was sort of not quite the Vista we know today. All of it was new. Um, the Comet, the bus system was not the Comet. It was the old system under SCNG. So they needed a, you know, a bus to really take them where they wanted to go. And uh, so we, had, we worked on those logistics. Um, but it really was not uh, uh, a burdensome expense or anything so uh, really whatever they thought we we thought was a great idea because it was mm -hmm. um, did you see how was there um, uh, an effect you could see in the city um, from the advocacy center I mean it, did it absolutely well one is a source of pride um, that you have a center where you know that uh, the US attorneys prosecutors from around the nation are uh, being trained here. Um, we saw that with the, our judges, federal judges in particular, our former U.S. attorneys, all taking a sense of ownership and pride in it. Uh, we also know that it had an impact on the restaurants and things of that nature. So it, uh, you could tell the um, impact. And I think also what it told me is, you know, things are sort of different now, but back then, you know, having a senior senator and really two of them, um, uh, was just uh, incredible um, in terms of getting projects that otherwise would be built. Uh, they just wouldn't be built in South Carolina. Uh, and uh, so that sort of struck me of how important it was. And I, I always thought that with Senator Hollings, he, he never advocated for anything that hadn't been well thought out. And um, it was just not bringing home the bacon, so to speak. It was a strategic uh, initiative. And if you know him, he had a very forceful personality, and he was able to explain things, certainly to me, very clearly and very quickly. Mm -hmm. When, um, when the, the project was determined that it was going to come here, um, it's my understanding that there was hesitancy from some of the DOJ staff about possibly coming down here. Was there any effort by the city or the Chamber of Commerce, perhaps, to go up to D.C. and talk to those folks? I believe there were trips, um, I believe, arranged by Senator Hollings' office that I participated in. And, um, you know, once uh, 
people get here. It, this is a uh, college town, you know, mid-size city that has all the amenities, uh, and certainly today, of which I attribute um, a lot of what um, uh, Senator Hollings' vision to have the center here was able to accomplish. So, you know, it's, um, I go to Washington all the time. I, I would think you, uh, you know, depending on where it was, it would be similar venue. Uh, you just have an air flight, but if it wasn't going to be in Washington, you'd probably have an air flight to wherever a senior sen senator state was. So, mm -hmm. uh, might as well be South Carolina. Yeah, I've talked to a lot of folks um, who, when the advocacy center first opened, they were concerned about getting staff from around the country to come here because it's like, why Columbia? Why would right. I go there? And so they, there was a, a lot of internal lobbying to get people to come here. And what they've said is when they pull up to the driveway and they see this amazing building um, as, uh, what did the senator call it? He called it, uh, uh, they built me another Versailles. <laughs> <laughs> So um, I guess what I, I uh, roundabout way, I feel like this building, this facility is, uh, it, says, it says a lot about the department's commitment to its staff and to training. Um, I don't know if that's something that you observe or not. Well, no question about that. I mean, uh, you know, you could be trained anywhere, I guess. But um, to have a facility like this dedicated to that purpose, uh, where it really it's in the middle of a university, but it's also its own entity to where the focus can be absolute on the training at hand, um, I think was a real commitment to DOJ. And also over many uh, years, there were obviously been many attorney generals since then, uh, many changes in staff. but. That training is still there, and I think it speaks to the high quality of, uh, of U.S. attorneys and other prosecutors uh, throughout the country. And it's always been uh, hopeful or uh, talked about training other uh, uh, attorneys, other prosecutors or government officials, and we've seen that as we walked in today. Mm -hmm. The um, one thing that I've, I've started to realize, and I've been here for a long time, so it, it, it been a slow realization for me, but it's the idea that um, this building, even more than Maine Justice in D.C., is the gathering place for an entire federal agency. Um, and I'm, I'm not sure if that's something that people are aware of. This is the one place where everyone comes mm -hmm. across the country. And it's, um, as a former mayor of Columbia, I mean, that has to be a source of Pride that this is tremendous pride that you know this facility is where every U.S. attorney uh, will uh, be, and, and probably no other facility where you will have that over many many years. So, without question, mm -hmm. uh, I think everything Senator Hollings thought it would be has been exceeded. Really, um, just any final impressions about. Uh, what the impact of the place has been on the city? Uh, you know, I think it really was an anchor that started a lot of, we were in the middle of a lot of redevelopment uh, then, and uh, Main Street and, you know, the uh, Vista and things of, of that nature. But, you know, right now you, if you had a facility like this, you, you know, wouldn't have a place on Main Street for it because it's redeveloped. Um, the place we thought about, an old department store is now the wonderful Columbia Museum of Art. So uh, it's one of those where um, it, it really was part of that renaissance from the city standpoint, and it served the purpose that the DOJ uh, knew it, it needed. And I think Columbia has done well, the University of South Carolina has done well showing that it is a good place for this facility to be. Even though it was a uh, a one-person vote, uh, I think it would be unanimous now. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Mayor. I appreciate your, your time. Thank you.